All right, looks like our attendee list has kind of stopped growing for the moment. So let's go ahead and get started. So thank you and good afternoon. Um, this is part of our admitted student day series. So ASU and the Fulton Schools of Engineering, we've prepared a number of different webinars for you as admitted students for the fall to just to learn a little more about maybe the program that you're going to be uh, doing or some of the extra Fulton Difference programs you might be interested in. So this is just one part of a larger series. So if you're dying to know more, we'll include our link to the registration for all the other admitted student day series that we have coming up. So this afternoon, we are going to be doing a deep dive into one of the six Fulton Schools of Engineering. So we're going to be exploring the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering which is home to our biomedical engineering degree program. And so we have three presenters with us today. My name is Nina and I am a coordinator on behalf of the Undergraduate Outreach and Recruitment Office. So I'll be really serving as just your general Fulton knowledge as well as our moderator for the Q&A today. But our main speaker is uh, Jessica Meeker. So I'll turn it over to you, Jessica. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see everyone here. So um, I'm the assistant director of the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering. So I manage the um, advising office and would get to see all of your lovely faces here eventually. Great. And joining us this afternoon, we also have a current biomedical student. So Ashley, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley. I'm a sophomore currently studying BME, and I'll talk a little bit more about my experience at ASU um, during this presentation. Great. So like I mentioned one more time, any questions you have, throw them in the Q&A. Um, this is your chance to get those questions answered. So really what I want to start off with is just that big picture perspective about what is the Fulton Schools of Engineering and how we're organized. For some of you, this might be the very first informational session you're attending, whereas others, maybe you've toured the campus or you've seen me in one of our weekly informational sessions. So all of this is really good information, whether it's a refresher or brand new, just to provide a little bit of context um, for the school that you're hopefully going to attend in the fall. So with ASU, ASU is located in Arizona. So for those of you that are out of state, it's helpful to see a map in case you've never been to Arizona before. Now, if you are from the Phoenix metro area, you are aware of ASU's presence. So we are actually four campuses that span that Phoenix metro area. And the Fulton Schools of Engineering were located on two of those, the Tempe campus and the Polytechnic campus. So our School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering, which we're focusing on today, that's at the Tempe campus. So that's really in the heart of that Phoenix metro area. The Tempe campus um, is really a large part of the city of Tempe. And so it's a very uh, fast paced kind of small city in itself type campus feel. So for all of you that are enrolled in the biomedical engineering program, your program will be located in Tempe, which is in the heart of our Phoenix metro area. Now, just a snapshot of what you are becoming a part of, the Fulton Schools of Engineering, we are the largest engineering college in the country with over 25,000 enrolled students. Now, don't let that scare you. I know that sounds like a lot. And if you are coming from a smaller high school or just really any high school in the country, um, that number might be a little intimidating. So when you think about attending a large public university, such as ASU, don't let the size scare you. So the, the size really affords us a lot of resources and a lot of support for our students. And now, as you're looking at specifically the biomedical engineering degree program, that's within one of our smaller schools of engineering. So you're gonna have this smaller sense of community built in within that larger Fulton community. Now, biomedical engineering is where you have been admitted into, but there are 25 undergraduate degrees to choose from. So something we get asked a lot is, hey, I picked biomedical engineering, but I'm not quite sure if that's right for me. Don't panic. There are a lot of other choices. So you get a semester or two in and you need to switch your major. That is something that we can certainly handle. Our advising team is well used to that. So just know that within the Fulton schools, there are 25 undergraduate degrees to choose from, with just one of those being biomedical engineering. Now I mentioned community a little bit ago. That I think is a really important thing to keep in mind as you are getting closer to attending college in the fall. So when you become part of ASU, you are part of the large ASU Sun Devil community. And like I mentioned, being a large public institution, 
that gives us a lot of resources to support our students. So I really think of it as the best of both worlds, that our size is great and it affords us resources, but the way we're structured also builds in a really deep sense of community. So by being a Fulton student, you're narrowing that sense of, of community, interacting with other students just within the Fulton schools. And then by belonging to the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering, you're adding that smaller layer of community. So you're gonna interact with similar students in your classes. You're gonna see similar faculty across your classes. And so it's really the best of both worlds, small sense of community, large resources of a public institution. So adding into that community discussion, something that we get asked a lot by um, students who are coming for the fall, where are you going to live? What is housing like? So within um, ASU, we have a residential model, meaning we really encourage and expect first year students to live on campus. And our dorms are college specific. So by being a first year student in the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering, you could be registering for housing within our Tooker house. So that's the house for our Fulton students on the Tempe campus. Now there's a lot of reasons why living on campus is beneficial, but again, it's that sense of community and support. When you are living on campus, you're more likely to use the resources there. You're more likely to go to the tutoring center. You're more likely to use our career center. You're more likely to form study groups with your friends and say, hey, we have a biology exam coming up, let's study. So when you're on campus, you're more likely to do those sorts of things. Now, one of the differences that you're gonna talk uh, see within housing is if you're interested in Barrett the Honors College. So if you are interested in getting that Honors College experience, you could be part of Barrett. Barrett does have their own housing. So as a Barrett student, you would live in the Barrett residential halls, but the Fulton schools make up such a considerable portion of Barrett that you can choose to live on a Fulton floor within the Barrett community. Again, it's all about layering on those senses of community so that you're prepared to be successful when you do get to college. All right, one last thing before I turn it over to Jessica. So it's nice to see really the big full perspective of the Fulton schools so you know where it is that you are fitting into. So what we're gonna focus on today is the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering. That's just one of the six schools within the Fulton Schools of Engineering. Now, the reason why this school structure is really nice is that you have really support on that smaller engineering kind of discipline level. So you'll have advisors just within the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering. So they know biomedical engineering inside and out. They know your courses and they're prepared to help support you. Now, the other nice thing about this school structure is that you're going to see students similar in your classes. You're gonna work with faculty kind of across your time within the biomedical engineering program. So that's really just kind of the big snapshot of the Fulton schools, specifically the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jessica to give you more of the student's perspective and more of a deep dive into what it is you're about to get involved in. And Nina, you saying that um, BME is ingrained in us made me think of our school logo. It actually has um, BME is in, and then our heart, our mind, and our DNA. It has like a DNA helix. It's so fun. I love that. Um, yeah. So we we definitely love supporting our biomedical engineering students. So we have a lot of good good info for you today, Ashley and I. And thank you for that introduction, Nina. Um, I also saw a question in the chat about pre-med that I went ahead and answered, and I do think that we'll address that later on as well. So definitely keep those questions coming um, and not in the, in the chat in the Q&A. So what is BME? Some of you know um, if you picked it, of course, based on the content, but then some of you who maybe just thought it sounded cool, um, you know, and might be thinking of, you know, chemical and biomedical or mechanical and biomedical. So I always like to start off by clarifying just what is biomedical engineering? Um, so BMEs are unique because they actually bridge the traditional engineering with other science disciplines, namely in the realms of biology and medicine. So we like to say that BMEs speak many languages because you guys understand engineering, you understand biology and the sciences, but then you also speak health and medicine. This is a rapidly growing discipline because of the rise of machinery and technology, of course, um, but especially in the aspects of um, health and wellness. Um, and I think that we've seen that with COVID and how it's impacted things, 
that that um, technological need for advancements in health will continue to be there. Biomedical engineers work on everything from artificial organs, surgical robotics, and then prosthetics, just to name a few things. And this is a super exciting field, of course, that pushes the boundaries of science and medicine to solve some of the, the challenges going on right now in society. Ashley, if you were gonna sum BME up in just a couple of words, what would you describe it as? We've gone over kind of the formal definition and I'm putting Ashley on the spot here, you guys, but would you say that it just bridges the gaps? How would you have thought about it as a freshman? Yeah, I think of it as the perfect combination of engineering principles and healthcare. So the reason I chose BME was I was interested in healthcare, but rather than being in a patient-based um, profession, I wanted to impact many people with like one medical device or something like that. So being able to use math and physics and all of those engineering principles and apply it to save lives is what I think BME is all about. I love it. Thank you for that perspective. I knew it would be different than mine, but still accurate. <laughs> awesome. Can we go to the next slide, Nina? So um, I was going to have Ashley just touch on kind of what the life of a BME student is like, you guys. We don't want to scare you and make you think it's all academics and rigor. That is a big part of it. But um, there's also other components. Um, in addition to your homework and your classroom learning, there's a lot of collaboration between teams in many of our courses. Um, and then many students also choose to get involved in a research lab. Um, you don't have to. Many of your classes will have labs attached to them. But what I'm referring to is kind of the additional um, research experiences that some students choose to take on. Um, Ashley, anything you want to share here about what it is to be BME with these five like core components? Um, I think the last one listed there, collaboration, is really huge for being a BME student, um, especially in our design courses. We have one each year, and honestly, they're my favorite courses because you get to work in a group and kind of go through the process of what you would do in industry if you were designing a medical device and bringing it to production. And my lab group from um, my first design course freshman year, I'm like best friends with those people. So it you awesome. really build those connections and collaborating with your peers. And I like to say that it seems like BMEs um, are some of the most organized students I've ever met. You'll see on the major map why in a moment, but you guys tend to have a lot of interest. You take on a lot of different things. Um, and so, of course, planning ahead is key in any major, but um, it just seems like BMEs have that skill coming in. Um, so let's talk about the major map just a little bit. I only snipped the first two semesters um, to chat about for this session. But really, the first year in BME, you're developing your foundation in the sciences and in math. Um, those are the most important things to focus on your first year because those two things predict success in your other major courses. So um, you guys take Calc 1 and Calc 2 your first year, Calc 2 and Calc, excuse me, Calc 3 and differential equations your second year. You also do chemistry for engineers, general biology, and then two semesters of physics. Um, and then BME courses that you're going to take sophomore and junior year rely heavily um, on the math and the sciences. So I wanted to point out just a couple other courses and Ashley just chime in here if you want to at any point. Um, but we get a lot of questions about ASU 101. It's that first course in term one. Um, that is an intro to biomedical engineering. It's a very small class, so it's capped at 19 students. Um, you'll have a section leader, um, which is going to be an upperclassman in biomedical engineering um, to provide support and different opportunities. You'll also have a faculty member who's dedicated um, to that particular class. Um, but what it is is each week, a different faculty member in biomedical engineering is going to come in and share their experience and kind of their path in BME. So we've had many faculty who worked in industry beforehand. We've had others who went straight from their bachelor's right into a PhD program. And then there's others in the middle who did a master's in between. Um, and they just bring a real variety of experience, both in their research and in their professional experience. So there's 15 weeks in the semester, you'll get to meet, you know, between 12 and 15 different faculty members your very first semester in BME. It's a really good way to kind of learn about the different research areas and just the different pathways available in biomedical engineering. There's a couple of other weeks in ASU 101 um, that are dedicated to the career fair, um, both attending and then an assignment on that. 
um, advising comes in one week. And I think that's all. Ashley, anything you want to add about ASU 101? Yeah, personally, I really enjoyed it since BME is so broad, being able to hear like all the different professors talk about what they do and their experiences was a great learning experience for me. Also, the professors are very open to um, inviting even first year students to join their research lab. So you can be like, oh, I have like no skills. I'm just a freshman. Like, how am I supposed to do this advanced research? If you just email them and be like, hey, I really enjoyed your talk at ASU 101. Can we talk more about your research? Many of them are very open to sharing their research with you. And I think they're part of the reason they're so open is because it's a great experience to find out if you love research. You know, it, it's not for everybody. I think some people thrive in other areas, but our faculty are definitely open to having freshmen in the lab because we know that you guys can contribute um, and learn from that experience. So the other two classes I wanted to talk about were BME 100, which is Introduction to Biomedical Engineering. That's gonna have a, a big focus on teamwork like Ashley mentioned on our earlier slide, but it's also gonna give you an introduction to the industry, what BME is, what BMEs do, what different career paths they have, um, kind of the difference in what your first year jobs might look like if you go to grad school before taking that first job. Um, so that's BME 100, that's three credits. There's a lecture and a lab. And then BME 182 that you also see in term one that's your first um, product design course. So BMEs take a series of four design classes before they do their senior capstone project. BME 182 really just introduces the design process. It's your first design lab experience. And then it kind of gets you thinking along the lines of the collaborative teamwork environment that you're gonna have in a lot of your other future BME classes. Anything before we go to the next slide, Ashley, that you wanna add about the first year? curriculum or courses? Um, I'll just mention about uh, physics because I saw a question in the Q&A about it. Uh, personally, I did like no physics in high school. I was going in with no background. Like I literally just knew gravity was a thing. But um, the physics, as long as you um, study hard, attend lecture, then you'll be good. I went to the tutoring center a lot as well. So take mm -hmm. advantage of all the resources that are available to you and you'll be sure to succeed. And then we talk about the expected um, workload and hours at orientation, but I love the analogy that for every one credit you're in, kind of the general rule of thumb is three hours outside of class. That might be reading the material, rewriting your notes, pre-reading the next course or the next week's material, but so if you're in 15 credits, like a freshman, you know, typically takes, you can expect about 45 hours outside of class, um, plus the 15 hours weekly that you'll be in class. So we like to say that it's kind of like a full-time job and a half being in school full-time as an engineer. And then how does Barrett, the Honors College courses impact the course load? That's a great question as well. So let me close this window here. Um, instead of that 15 hour and 16 hours you guys see in term one and term two, you would be adding three credits onto that um, because you would take the human event for first and second semester Barrett students. Now, I should say the disclaimer, um, many of you probably take AP credits or take AP exams, IB credit, dual enrollment. So this what we're showing on the screen is not the only way. Um, and definitely not what the first year would look like for all of you. So when you attend your orientation session and meet with your advisor, that's really where you will customize your plan and go over all of the credits that you're bringing in, if any. Um, and then sometimes people start in different spots with English and math, um, and that's to be expected as well. Any other questions I missed there, Nina? Nope, that looks good. I was just gonna bring those up. So perfect timing, all right. Thank you. Ashley, do you wanna go ahead and go a little more in depth to kind of your path and what you've pursued so far? Sure, so since we just were talking about Barrett, I'll just mention that I'm coming at you live from the Barrett Vista dorms right now. Love it. Um, human events. Um, people always say like, oh my gosh, it's so scary. I really enjoyed it. I like learning literature and all of that. It was a good break from my STEM classes as well. Um, Outside of class, I'm also part of Biomedical Engineering Society. So we're a professional organization that connects students with one another. Our general body meetings, we bring in guest speakers. So that can be professors or people from industry. So it's a really great way to learn more about BME and connect with fellow students. 
something else I'm involved with is the Solar Spell Initiative. So within um, all the different schools at ASU, there's a lot of research initiatives. So the one specifically for Fulton is called FURY. It stands for Fulton Undergraduate Research Initiative. And I was able to get funding for the work that I was doing. So with Solar Spell, I work on an offline digital library that provides manuals to biomedical engineering technicians that work in resource constrained areas. So I think it's really nice to have that kind of human factor with engineering as well. And then as Jessica mentioned earlier, ASU 101 is one of the classes that everyone takes and I was a section leader for that. So I helped my professor in sending out different announcements to the students. Um, and my role was basically just to be a point of contact. Sometimes it's like, it may be intimidating to like speak directly with your professor right away. So if there's any other questions, I always answered them for the students that way. I also gave some more insight on preparing for the career fair with my personal experience going there. So I really enjoyed that and I plan to do that again in the fall, so. And then this is a little outside of BME, but I'm also part of the Devil's Dance Team. So that's really fun. Um, I'm actually performing at an event this weekend with my dance team, so that's exciting. And I recommend that in addition to your classes and all your other engineering related electives, being able to join like a more fun club, I guess, one that like takes your mind off things is really good. Having that work-life balance, you know, is a good thing to start now during your college years. And additionally, you see on the left there, I'm pursuing two minors, one in material science engineering and one in Spanish. So if you do come in with a lot of credits like I did from my AP classes, you can always talk to your advisor during your um, orientation if you are interested in doing something else besides BME. Definitely, thank you so much, Ashley. You do so many different things. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I wanted to touch on before we um, turn it back over to Nina is we get a lot of questions um, from our incoming students about the four plus one program. Um, and so I find that it's helpful to talk about that now in case you guys want to be planning um, on pursuing that. So the four plus one program, if you haven't heard, allows you to complete your bachelor's and your master's, both in biomedical engineering in five years. What you do is you apply in the spring of your junior year. You need to have a 3.5 overall GPA. And upon admission, that allows you to take up to 12 credits of graduate coursework as a senior. Um, and so those courses end up double counting towards your undergrad and towards your master's degree. Um, but in addition to that huge benefit and also not having to take the GRE, you really kind of get a head start on networking with other grad students and kind of starting that um, relationship building with faculty um, who you may end up doing some of your graduate coursework um, and projects with. So instead of what would be normally a one and a half year master's, you end up just completing it in the one year, which saves time, it saves money. And then if you end up wanting to get your master's anyway, it's a really kind of seamless way um, to do that. So definitely throw any questions that you might have about that um, in the Q&A box and we're happy to address those. And then Nina, I will turn it back over to you. Yeah, so at this point, we have some time really to answer any questions you have. So I'm going to give a little bit of the next steps approach with the contact information on the screen as you're thinking of questions. So at this point, really the next step for admitted students is to submit an enrollment deposit. Now what that enrollment deposit is, is it separate than tuition? It's a $300 fee that really just secures your spot within ASU for the fall. So if you've already done that, awesome, because what that does is it unlocks what's called your new student experience. That is basically our virtual extended orientation. So if you're really interested in scheduling that meeting with your advisor to pick your classes, scheduling and booking your housing, picking your meal plan, all of the information about how you submit your transcripts from high school, all of that is rolled in to our new student experience. And so that is um, something you access on your My ASU portal. So at this point, I hope everyone has logged into their My ASU portals because that is really where everything next steps wise is, is located at. And so kind of just to kind of summarize those next steps, 
paying your enrollment deposit is what unlocks the new student experience. And so it's really a, a good chance for you to do that sooner rather than later. So you can take your leisure with that new student experience because you're gonna be gathering some documents. You're gonna be scheduling a time for that orientation. And so the, the more on top of that you are, the less stressful the end of your senior year will be because you wanna enjoy it. Um, so then as you have questions, if you have any questions about the new student experience or your MySU portal or any of that, um, we're happy to help. So what you see on the screen is the Fulton School's general email address. So any questions you have, you can email that to that email address and then we can help get you connected either to your advisor or to housing or to financial aid. Then if you're looking for more specific questions for biomedical engineering, that's the SBHSE email that you see at the bottom of the screen. So you can kind of think about it as two buckets of communication, anything general Fulton or admissions or financial aid, that's the Fulton School's email address. Anything specific to your BME degree, that's that SBHSE email that you see down at the bottom. So I did see, I think, a Q&A pop up. Okay, so if a student is interested in neuro applications for BME, are there ways through electives or research to focus on that area? That's an excellent question. I'll turn that over to Jessica so she can answer that. Yeah, that's a super common question. Um, so there is a sort of path in our related electives that you can um, fill with neural coursework. Um, and then if you're really, really interested, ASU also offers a concurrent degree in neuroscience. It's only available as a concurrent degree, but um, we have our first BME student actually finishing that this year. Um, and it's been great. So if you don't wanna to go to that extent, um, you could just fill your related electives for BME with um, neuro classes, but depending on kind of where your interest lies, you could customize it even further. Good question. And something else I can add to that is we mentioned um, joining a professor's research lab. Many of our faculty within SBHSC do focus on like neuro research. So I'm actually doing onboarding currently for a lab that does neuroimmune imaging. So if you are interested in that, go on to our SBHSC website, look at the professors, and if you email them, many will be happy to talk more about that with you. I'm glad that you mentioned that because I'm going to briefly plug Fury a little bit. So something that I've seen from my work with biomedical engineering students is like Jessica said, you're very go-getter, you're very eager, you're very ready to get involved. And so research is something I would highly encourage you look into. So Ashley mentioned it, it's, it's called FURY, the Fulton Undergraduate Research Initiative. That's just one way of doing research. There are other ways, but that one is a really, really unique program because when you think about research, what that actually means, oftentimes at other universities, that's reserved for graduate students. So masters or PhD students. But at Fulton, we really see a lot of value in giving undergraduates the opportunity to do research. So the way that program really works is that you, you find a faculty member that you're interested in working with. So say you find on the, the SBHSC website a faculty member that's doing neural research and you're fascinated. It really is just a matter of reaching out to them and saying, hey, I'm interested in doing Fury. Would you be interested in being my mentor? Because Fury is all about connecting students that want to do research and faculty that love mentoring students in research and connecting them. And so jointly you propose a research project. And if you're awarded the, the, the kind of the FURY program, you're given a stipend. So you get some money to do that research. And the faculty member also gets some money for helping out. So that's nice, you get paid to do it. But then at the very end of the FURY program, you get to participate in a research symposium, which is really valuable for a number of reasons. So valuable number one, you practice preparing a poster, like a formal research poster, which really goes a long way as far as like applying to internships to say, here's a polished product that I've done. And then the other thing is practicing public speaking. A lot of engineers really want to develop those soft skills, which Fury is a great way to do that. So that's a good plug for Fury if you are interested. I think I saw Jessica put it in the, the chat. I think I saw the chat loop. Okay, um, so that, that's just a little plug about Fury since we talked about it. 
I mean, you you might want to throw the Fury link in there. I actually, because Ashley mentioned that we have a group of neural faculty, I looped or linked rather the SBHSE page. Oh, perfect. Okay. At the end, before we close, I'll stop sharing my screen for everybody. So I do see a couple questions pop in. What year do students typically start doing internships? So I'll give you kind of the staff perspective and then I'll let Jessica and Ashley kind of chime in with their perspective. So typically what we tell students is that you're looking to do an internship after your junior year. So that summer between your junior year and your senior year is really that sweet spot for internships. Because you've developed enough of the content knowledge to make yourself successful, but you're not so deep in the job hunt look. So so that's kind of like the sweet spot between your junior and your senior year. Now that doesn't mean you can't try and do internships earlier. So what we have within Fulton is a career center dedicated to Fulton students, and they run career fairs twice a year. They're open to everyone. You can go as early as your freshman year and just start networking with different recruiters, seeing what companies are out there. Um, So it's a chance for you to, to get used to looking for internships before it really becomes time in which you want to to start really strongly considering an internship. So um, junior, between your junior and senior year, and utilize the the career center and it's really, really helpful. I would echo what Nina said there, you guys, that's definitely the most popular time, Um, but it's not uncommon for um, each year. We have a couple students who might get one between freshman and sophomore year, um, and then more commonly between sophomore um, and junior year. So there's kind of in BME, there's, internships, I think, that are more suited for um, freshmen and sophomore students. And then there's, you know, the paid ones that are in summer, that are full-time, that are a little more prestigious. And I think they typically recruit, like Nina said, in that sweet spot between junior and senior year. Um, But the volunteer ones definitely, I think, are willing to take on first and second year students. Um, So we have all of those opportunities available in BME. Yeah, and just to give a personal example, so many job postings, they'll always say like, looking for juniors and above. And like, when you first start out, it's kind of discouraging, but it's okay. Like, just wait it out, it's fine. But like um, Jessica said, the volunteering ones are open usually for all grade levels. So during spring, yeah, spring of my freshman year, I actually already got an internship. It's through um, Project Cure. It's a nonprofit that sends medical equipment to developing countries. So there I was able to uh, learn more about different types of biomedical equipment while fixing them and kind of uh, troubleshooting them. So I wasn't like doing any big designing and stuff like that, but it was still a good way to learn more about BME and make my resume stronger for when I do apply for the more prestigious internships that are paid for my junior year. I think that's a really important perspective. So thank you, Ashley. That's, it's so nice to have a student on the call because really that, it's that lived experience that you really wanna learn from. Um, so kind of with that, this is a good question for you, Ashley, as well. And then Jessica, we'll, we'll kind of chime in too. Uh, would you recommend freshmen holding off on working or volunteering or playing a sport until they become more comfortable with their just day-to-day curriculum and studying habits? So Jessica, do you wanna take that one? Sure. We um, in BME, I think, are very um, conscious of the effort that it takes for those courses. So if you ask your advisor, yes, we would say hold off at least your first semester or a few, maybe two months into your first semester till you have your academic routine down. Um, Because we, while we understand that you guys, many of you took rigorous course loads in high school, you know, the first semester of college can be a very different experience. The courses are a little more compressed because they're taking place in a semester versus a year. Um, and so we, we typically do recommend holding off on taking on too much until you um, have a better understanding of what your academic routine will look like. And then Ashley, you might, might echo this as well. We, we like to tell you guys to add in things in bits and pieces. So maybe you start off with a job or a research experience that's only 10 hours a week before you can commit to that 20 or 25 hour a week, because that's a lot to take on if you want to be, you know, that student that gets A's in most of their classes, A's and B's. Um, So just kind of keep in mind that 45 hours a week of academic prep, plus the 15 hours a week that you're going to be in class. So 60 hours a week is really what you're looking for, um, just for school. Um, And then you'll add in things from there. So did you want to chime in at all, Ashley? 
Um, yeah, and if you are very interested in joining like a sport or something like that, ask about the time commitment for that. Cause like my dance team, it's it's not like the main like spirit squad. Like I know they practice a lot for me. I just have practice about six hours a week. So I know that's not adding like too much to my time. So just look at how many credits you're taking and like whether or not you'll be able to commit to that extracurricular activity. It's much easier to add more slowly than it is to, to realize that you need to cut back. So when I work with some of our really great students, I, I run a student organization called the Fulton Ambassadors, and they're very much go-getters. A lot of them are biomedical students. Um, that's usually something I, I recommend is that it's much easier to slowly add things you're interested in rather than to admit that you need to take a step back. Sometimes that's hard. That's harder to do. Um, so just a little bit about that. It looks like we have one more question. And um, Jessica, I'm gonna add, like throw this one to you because I'm a little unsure Perfect. specifically about biomedical engineering. But the question is, are there study abroad options for biomedical engineering specifically? I was so excited to see this question, Nina, because BME did um, propose and get approved their first like just BME study abroad program. So there's many types of study abroad options, you guys, but yes, BME actually has one. Um, it's called neuroscience. I think it's in London, but don't quote me on that. It might be Scotland. Um, and it was proposed around a huge neuroscience conference that happens in Western Europe at that time of the summer. So it was approved and then COVID happened. Um, so it hasn't run yet. Um, but I do think the two faculty members that are involved do plan on um, reinvigorating it once we can. But, and Nina, you might want to chime in here, let me know. Um, you don't have to do a BME program to study abroad. I've had students go to Singapore and Australia and, you know, Ireland has a, a very big um, biomedical presence. So does um, a couple universities in Australia. So it doesn't have to be a BME program that you're going to. It doesn't even have to have a BME program there. You can go and study the food of France in summer if you want, <laughs> or Italian literature or anything of that nature that you might think will add to your experience as a student and as an undergrad. So definitely if you can, um, I would encourage you to pursue a study abroad opportunity. It gets harder when you're an adult with bills and stuff to go abroad. So do it now if you can. <laughs> That is an absolutely true statement. Yeah, yes. we, um, within the Fulton schools, we're really growing a lot of our global engineering education, part of that being study abroad. So now that hopefully we're kind of on the tail end of the pandemic, those study abroad opportunities will start to pick back up. But, but like Jessica mentioned, don't necessarily limit yourself to a study abroad that is specifically engineering. You get a lot out of traveling regardless of the reason why you're traveling. Um, so definitely if you have the means and have the time, really, really encor encourage the study abroad. And then um, that's, I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen here in just a moment. I'll pull together the links to that study abroad website um, as well as the Fury website. But before I take my screen down, I wanna explain what it is that you see here. So you see a QR code that will take you directly to the rest of our admitted student day series. So there's a lot of other things out there. If you're really interested in doing research, there's an admitted student day webinar for that. If you're interested in doing engineering, but for like a more community oriented project, there is a, a elective course called Epics that we're doing an admitted student day on. So there's a lot of other sessions available and I highly recommend you checking it out because the more you're gathering this information now, the easier it is to figure out what it is you're going to be doing for the fall instead of just waiting and then trying to figure it out all at once. So I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen now that you've seen that QR code and I'll pull together a couple of those links that we mentioned. So um, while I'm doing that, feel free to throw other questions in the Q&A and we can help get those answered for you. Can I add one more thing about study abroad, Nina? Um, just because we did get a question about Barrett. So Barrett has some awesome summer study abroad opportunities to knock out some of your Barrett credits. Um, and then there are exchange programs for study abroad where you go and study the full semester at another institution. And if that's the type of study abroad you choose and you're on any type of new American university scholarship, you can actually use that scholarship towards the cost. Um, and that's only if you go in a fall and spring semester. So that takes a little more planning just with BME's 
um, prescriptive major map, but we've had plenty of students do it and it has been an awesome experience for them to be in another country for a full semester. So if that's what you're looking for. And I just put the, the link in the chat for the global engineering education. So highly recommend checking that out. I'm also going to put the link to our FURY website. So FURY, um, a lot of students get really excited about doing FURY um, with Fulton. Now just note that you cannot do it the first semester that you begin at ASU. So you have to be a second semester freshman. You can't just do it right in the fall. But if you're super passionate and already excited, you can look to the spring to participate in that. And if anything, that's kind of nice because it gives you that lead time of forming a relationship with some faculty that you're interested in. So over the fall, that fall semester, starting to network, starting to connect with people, get an idea about what you might want to do for Fury. So that way you're prepared to hit the ground running for that spring semester. So I just put that in the chat as well. So Ashley, while we are waiting for other questions to come up, I'm gonna pose one to you to start generating some, some questions. So out of all of the majors to choose from, why did you choose biomedical engineering? Was it a hard choice? Were you going between two? Really what led you to where you are now? Um, I knew I wanted to do something in engineering because I really liked math in high school. So I was just like reading all the different descriptions for like the schools within Fulton and BME stuck out to me because I did like biology as well. So like I said earlier, I think BME is the perfect combination between like healthcare and engineering. So a lot of times people say BME is like the jack of all trades or something, which it really is because you dip your toes into like all these different disciplines. So it's really great to explore all these different things. I love learning, so it was a perfect fit. <laughs> And I know we only showed the first two semesters of the major map, you guys, but what Ashley's referring to in terms of the different stuff you'll get to take is you take programming, which is a computer science course, you take circuit EEE, which is an electrical engineering course, you actually get to take a biomechanics class, which is a mechanical engineering course adapted to kind of the needs that BME utilizes those concepts for. Um, so you get to know a lot of different things and some students choose to concentrate their electives in one area and then other students use their electives to continue to cover more ground. So if they want to take a different programming language or a solid works class or upper division biology if they really you know want to go the pre med path. So you can carve it out to be whatever you want really and to meet the needs of you know kind of the skill set you want to have at the end of your undergrad degree. I haven't seen any other questions come in. So I'll give you my parting words um, as we wait to see if there's anything else that does pop up. So if you've gotten what you needed from this presentation, you're more than welcome to log off and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. But we are going to stick around for another uh, few minutes just to answer any questions. So if you want to stick around, you are welcome to. If you've gotten what you need, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, and then don't forget to check out the other Admitted Student Day series that we're offering just to see what else you might be interested in. I was really hoping for some more questions, guys. Oh, we got some. Don't They're disappoint me. Oh, here they come. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, can I do a four plus one and an MBA? Do you, do you want to go and take that one, Jessica, while I look at the other sure. ones? Yep. No problem. So the four plus one program, you guys, is specifically BME to BME. Um, but we do, we've had several students, actually, even in recent years, we've had more who choose to pursue an MBA. And you can definitely carve out that path um, during your undergrad, but it wouldn't be through the formal four plus one. All right, so then um, another one is about financial aid. So I'm gonna put this in the chat for everybody because it is helpful to know. Mm -hmm. So ASU does have a very strong financial aid office that I believe has a 24 um, hour line for help with students. So I've just put the link to the financial aid office in the chat. So if you have specific questions, I would really highly encourage you reaching out to the financial aid office now that's for ASU as a whole. 
if you have applied to a specific Fulton scholarship, so if you're looking at like the Fulton scholarship page, um, I would recommend contacting our Fulton scholarship contact. Her name is Nikki Sanchez. I'll put that in the chat in just one second. Um, so that it's really kind of twofold. If you're looking at big scholarships or the, the NAMU, so the New American University scholarships that are based on merit, that's big ASU scholarship office. If you're looking at something specific for the Fulton schools, um, so you've applied and you're waiting to hear back, I would recommend contacting our Fulton office, which is right there. Okay, so that's the link to um, the ASU Fulton Scholarship Office. Nikki Sanchez, she's the contact for that. She's really great to deal with. So if you've got questions, she's a good contact for you. One other thing to add to that, Nina, is I know that um, this is kind of the financial aid season. Um, so I'm not sure that they've started hosting awards yet for fall. We've been getting questions from current students on that. So don't panic if you don't see anything. Drop them a line, give them a chat, you know, but it's kind of that time of year where they're getting everything together to start awarding for fall. Absolutely. So that that's a really, yeah, very helpful. I'm glad you mentioned that, Jessica. So don't panic. If you're waiting to hear back, don't panic. Um, it's just the mid middle of March. So we will be getting to you heightened heighten season for financial aid. So if you are having trouble getting through and you do have a question, by all means, contact them. Um, but just know that this is a busy time for financial aid. Okay, so we do have one more question. Um, what extracurriculars should pre-med biomedical engineers look into? So Ashley or Jessica, do you have any specific recommendations you're interested in? Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I also just was going to mention that ASU also has a pre-health advising office. So if you're pre-med, in addition to BME, you would get your BME advisor in our office, and then you would also have an, a designated um, pre-health advisor to help you, um, whether you're on the med path, pharmacy path, veterinary path, dentistry, any of those things. Um, but really, if you're in the pre-med realm, they want to see research experience, clinical experience, so out in the hospitals volunteering or in the form of different internships or shadowing, um, and then excellent grades, of course. <laughs> so those kind of three um, main pillars. Um, but in terms of extracurriculars, um, a lot of our pre-med students who are BME want to be in the hospital environment anyway. Um, so they look really into shadowing positions, shadowing med students, doing something called being a scribe, where you take notes when you're observing um, the different physicians and med students. Sometimes that's paid, sometimes it's volunteer, um, but the more you can get out there and start getting some of those hours under your belt, the better. And then most pre-med students do this anyway, but you wanna take diligent notes of all of the experiences that you do so that when it's time to apply to med school, you have all those kind of in one place to reference. All right, so it looks like we have one just last question um, before we wrap up this afternoon. So the question is, will financial aid get updated after your first year with higher GPA in terms of getting more scholarships? So as, as your years go on, you can certainly apply to scholarships each year. And so as you maybe improve in some regards or you've gained more experience, you can certainly apply to scholarships past your first year. Um, so it's not, this is not the end all be all of scholarships if you don't get something your freshman year. There are other ways um, to apply for scholarships your sophomore, your junior, your senior year. And then outside of that, there are other ways um, to kind of look into more financial options, such as finding a job on campus. That's a really popular option um, just to get a little bit of funding. If you are um, within the residential halls and you work for the residential halls, that helps with um, your fees for the residential halls. So there's a couple other things. I'm happy to help give one-on-one -on -one advice for any of those sorts of things as well. So that will be kind of our last parting words is any questions you didn't get to answer today or things you still have questions about, just reach out to us. We are happy to help answer them. So anything Fulton-wise directed to that Fulton Schools email, anything specific to biomedical engineering, you can do the SBHSE email. So with that, I believe Kaylee is going to be logging out so she can get into her next admitted student day session at four o'clock. So we will end this session now. And then um, any questions, feel free to reach out. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Hi, everybody.